Welcome. You're listening to The Best of Investing on Talk 910. You know our show. It's where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. And for those of you listening for the first time, here's our format. A few guys sitting around a bar having drinks, but without the drinks, talking business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm pleased to have as my co-host, Jeremy Forcier of Guaranteed Rate and Rick Warner of Keller Williams Realty. Mark Hunt is off today. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Write that number down, 888-912-1190, because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. And the vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, located one hour northeast of San Francisco. The vacations are free. They're only request a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. You can reach them at 916-777-5511. And today's trivia theme is assassinations. Have a little fun with this one. Why? Because we have an attorney in the studio today. Our website is best of investing. We always have to tease the attorneys. That's true. Our I don't web- know how that matched up. But I don't know how I it did either, but yeah. I like it. We like it. Wasn't John Wolf like like a really attorney? nice guy. <laughs> he <laughs> does. He is a very nice guy. Okay. Uh, our website is bestofinvesting.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube by typing Best of Investing Radio Show. Uh, we're also on television, Comcast Channel 26 and AT&T Channel 99 on Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 6 p.m. Now, today's special guest is Spencer Shear, who is a real estate attorney who was on the show, gosh, I guess about two years ago. So we decided, uh, you know, every two years we got to have him on again. And he's got some important updates for us. Spencer, take it away. What, what's going on from a real estate um, attorney standpoint? Got some new rules coming. Uh, two overviews, I would say. One, uh, tables have turned uh, in terms of borrower or lender that... Uh, with a, a influx of new laws, tremendous amount of leverage that borrowers now have that they didn't before if you're a qualified borrower. Uh, second, the issues uh, I think all are going to rotate around whether or not this real estate recovery is for real or whether it's not uh, artificially driven by easy money from the Fed and if there's going to be a little bit of a retrenchment. Okay. So, you know, my, my perspective is you, I could give you some stats and some uh, information that, that might indicate that uh, some of the real estate recovery you see right now might be just a little bit ahead of itself. Yeah. Well, I'd love to, I'd love to have the, that, that debate. That would be good. That's a good conversation to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about this thing called the California Homeowners Bill of Rights. Uh, October. Yeah, H-O-B-R. So let's talk about that. Uh, really, what happened was it, it's kind of cow, put the cow back in the barn. Uh, prior to what went on, I'd say if you take 2007 as the top of the market, uh, and then things started sliding down. Everybody realized that it was a giant Ponzi scheme. Anybody who could fog a mirror could get a loan. And uh, you had many, many people who should have had loans made and tremendous amount of leverage. And you're now seeing the unwinding of that process. Part of the unwinding is that you're, you've got a tremendous amount of legislation that was passed that was designed to both slow down the process, give consumers much more rights, and in effect force lenders and borrowers to have to get together uh, and either modify loans or keep loans that otherwise would have washed through the system of foreclosure alive and uh, you know, therefore still kicking. Okay. Go ahead, Daddy, you missed that question for him. Well, and I'm sorry, did, did that, was it called the California or is it a federal, is it state or federal? Well, this one, this is state law. Okay. It's, uh, it's called SB 900. Is this the one that went into effect, uh, was it last July or? January 1st of this last January 1st, year. and this is the one that requires people, if they're in negotiations with a bank, a modification or short sale that the bank cannot foreclose. Is that correct? And does that? Yeah, you're saying one of the things that's probably the more uh, you know, visible, but I mean, there's a ton of different things. But yes, I mean, you can't. That do is part they, of the bill you're talking. They about. can't do what they call dual tracking. I mean, I can't foreclose while I'm negotiating with you. Okay. And but that in itself, is your experience, has that been a little bit dicey? I mean, for example, I had one two weeks ago where we were negotiating a short sale, had a foreclosure date. Um, had a, a contract that they had given us a price, uh, the bank. We gave them that price, all cash, close in two weeks, whatever. They denied it on a Monday, and they foreclosed on Wednesday. Oh, those guys. So that doesn't, at the very least, that doesn't seem to be in good faith, but is that a violation possibly of that, or, or no? Because they had officially denied it, and therefore they could foreclose. Uh, that's a good question, but it's kind of like saying I found a scalpel in the abdomen, how did it get here? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> there's so many different questions they have to ask, but I would say to you that and that's part of the problem is that different lenders, let me just give you a little background, sure. is that there's much more extensive rules for lenders that foreclose on 175 or more California properties in a year 
than there are on those who foreclose on 175 and less. So you got to ask questions like, which is my lender in more or less? And then uh, some restrictions apply, but only if you have a first trustee, not a second trustee. So you got to ask that kind of question. So just a short version of your situation is that if they had a foreclosure preventative alternative application and process, like you're saying, a short sale application, then until they finalize that, if it was completed, uh, if you're an over 175, you can't foreclose until it's finalized, completed, and communicated to you. And you know, many, but, but, but all those things did happen. I mean, I do yeah. believe they're the 175. It was uh, whatever it's IndyMac, I think. Okay. So there, they would be the 175 and above, correct? Probably. Yes, well, most likely. Yeah, and uh, IndyMac's always going to be 175. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but they they had communicated with us that uh, you know it was denied via email on a Monday, and then I get a call from an agent at the auction going, hey, can you tell me about this house, because it's on auction. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're in the middle of a negotiating a short sale. So, it seems like they're luring you, you know, into a false sense of security. Well, I mean, the, the reality is, is that that's the first time we've ever had something that happened like that, even even before this law. I mean, usually you have time, and they're willing to postpone, and they want to. Well, it's, it's almost like they, they kind of, and you sort of, the theory there is, you're thinking, you know what, you guys knew all along that you were going to deny it. It's just that they let the clock run so that they could go ahead and deny it quickly and then before you had a chance to file BK or anything to stop it yeah. or get an injunction. Yeah, so let me interject one thing because I represent the banks, although uh, in most instances, but I, I'm going to say to you that in, there's the one area that you have a tremendous amount of leverage in is if there's a loan modification application that's in process and you're especially over 175, they have to communicate to you and give you an appeal period and you're not going to have the scenario you just said but the scenario you provided with a short sale not not that kind of protection it's going to be a decision made that's so it. the modification protection is different than the short sale positively protection. okay that's in that I don't think that we as you know general realtor association we don't I don't know that we know that yeah. readily yeah. also 175 that's kind of a weird number yeah, they're, they're making it well, no, because that way you know you got all these little tiny banks, and it's hard to overlay this tons of regulation yeah. or whatever. Does that make is that basically the logic? That, that's it's, just, yeah. it's just an odd number, one seventy five. You know what I mean? Rather than like you know two hundred or, or or ten a month or something like that. It's kind of an odd thing. Anyway, we're going to cut to a first commercial uh, break here. We have Spencer Shear, who's a real estate attorney, giving us some good information about foreclosing and what you can. We're going to get into suggestions if we can. Of, of, I know you represent the bank, so that's going to be a little bit tough. But I'll help you along. You'll help you along, because you're a good guy. All right. The uh, theme is assassinations. Here's our first commercial break. Here's our first trivia question. We all know Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, we all think we know that he killed Kennedy, right? Let's assume he did. But who killed Oswald? The first three callers with the correct answer. One of three, three, eight, two, nine. Stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. We all know Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy, but who killed Oswald? Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, yes. No. Well, 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because when we come back, we're going to get into some more very interesting real estate law. Do we really know that Lee Harvey Oswald killed Well, that's why I said it. We, no, yeah. We, you, that's why yeah. I, I put the caveat. Uh, we all think what we know. Who was that guy, that, that mobster guy, the underling? We Jack don't. Ruby. Jack Ruby, that's right. I think we assume we know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, for some reason, were you guys hearing the crackling? I did at first. And I don't know if... But then it went away. It went away. Okay. And if so you... Don't touch if you it. Yeah, if you... I know. It's one of those. And we have to be careful where we <laughs> where we kick our feet too. Not, not it's, this yeah. is the whole problem one over here. That, that was usually the problem. You're right. Okay. And so, like right there, it's good. All right. Yeah. You don't get any more. Okay. So let me save this file. And let's move okay. on. I think Jeremy over participated in that last. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, you know, there's there. really nothing to say. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be too negative about things. You're like, listen. No, it makes for good radio. No, I think it is. And I, I think it's great that he often represents the banks. I mean, the yeah, bank's perspective is the harder thing to understand. We all know what this, I mean, I, I, like, I know what the seller's perspective is always, you know. And there's this sense, there's this sense of entitlement, honestly, from the borrowers who's off, and it's often unjustified, right? Well, yeah, I, mean, well, I get calls like 10 That's what I was going to say, and I was like, you know what, I'm, not, I'm just not going to say that right now. But Well, that's the thing. Like, I've got a lady <laughs> right now who we're, you know, we're, 
got an offer on her place, short sale, but she hasn't paid her mortgage for two and a half right. years. It's like, come on. I mean, and then she's mad because the bank's going to move quickly on her short sale. It's like, dude, you've been sitting here for dude, free. You, you call her dude. We did call her dude. It's the dude. Yeah, no, the dude is better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, so anyway, I'm I'm not like anti bank. It's just no, I, I I have people. I have maybe ten people call me a month, and I'll help people more for that. But the people are calling up what you're saying is this entitlement thing, totally yeah. skewed version. Right. Of yeah. I can't believe they foreclosed on me. Right. Yeah. They should have never given me this money. Oh really? Yeah. I love but it's that okay one. that you sign the fucking paperwork. But if you're smart, you can. You see how I block myself out? Yeah. Right yes. Now. <laughs> yeah. I was also ready to push the button. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I puted We're, myself. Yeah, I you did. Right. You're all. Like you're this. all. This. Yes. <laughs> I, I think so my, my lips moved, but nothing came it. out. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> But it kind of did. You're all. Yeah. That happened to a lot of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, well I have three small out. children, so I have to. I've had practice muting myself before. How old are your kids? 11, 8, and 6. Boys and girls? ones. One girl, two boys, and then I got my old one too, who's almost as old as Jeremy. <laughs> True. How old are you? I'm a 92. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, that's I was going to say 85. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah, we're 10 years apart. Yeah. It's a good life. Enjoy your year. And we're it's 10 years good. apart. Yeah, no You're only 43? Really yeah. Okay. 33, 43, 53, 63. No, yeah, 59. <laughs> right on. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. I hope I look as good as you. I know. Awesome, man. Yeah. Wait, are you talking about him? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Listen, I, well, I hope I look as good as me when I'm 92. Also. Yeah, that's a good point. I seriously though, I I, I, I uh, uh, quiet, 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 everybody. Okay. Edward's got something. I got something here. Okay. Everybody so hold hands. There, there was a when. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I went to the gym one time, and there was this lady who was probably in her late fifties, you know, that type, pretty decent shape, but she just thought she was. When you said pretty now. decent shape, I don't mean it like that. I mean okay. she's just I mean, just saying. Uh, yeah. I, I, the whole thing. I meant the whole, oh, okay. whole, right. whole okay. package, okay. okay? You know, and the makeup and all that stuff. And she, she, you know, exercises a little bit. She, she was decent, okay, but she had this attitude that you could just tell. Attitude, like, Judy's no good. That, <laughs> that's it. It's almost like where's the camera type thing, right? Yeah. So somehow I, I don't know how we got into this conversation, but I I, I just I couldn't take it any longer. I said, you know what? I said, you look pretty good. I go, I don't know. I'm like seventy five. She looks pretty good. Oh wow. She didn't take it as a compliment. I don't know why. Wow. But it's true. I got well, my wife is seventy five. She looks. I'm not seventy five. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean sorry it. About I that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the that's the big. That's a good backhanded. It's a good one. Yeah. Good job. But it's true. I hope when my wife's really 75, she looks, looks good. <coughs> okay. You know, do you, do you know this? I wasn't very yeah, nice. Okay. I know your wife. You know my wife. Okay. okay. I met her at a party, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brown. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Brown. Yeah, that that. It's weird. Ava Brown. Yeah. Okay. Emma. Uh, Steve. She's punchy. Well, let's let, let me get, I don't want to get into the story that you're just saying, because I think that makes Wait, which story? The one, the one about, you oh, know. You want to talk about entitlement? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I won't. Okay. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> yeah, because you can get to save my fun time. Well, and, yeah. And then he's got to be careful, because we're, we're alienating. the slippery slope. It is slippery, and we're... we're no, but they, you know what? A lot of the people who are listening... They appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. This is Talk 910. This isn't... Uh, yeah, like exactly. Media or whatever. Yeah. And then you, know, you have your post-foreclosure about protecting tenants and buyers of properties that are already foreclosed. I think that's kind of interesting. Yes, yeah, so tenants' rights. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Right, so well, they got. I mean, just for what they do is, there's you can you can be a tenant after foreclosure that you couldn't be before. If you're an owner uh, and the tenant, they have a little bit of time where you can come on. Now you can stay forever. And then also, if your landlord doesn't disclose to you that uh, you're in foreclosure. that they're in foreclosure, then uh, they can get sued. You get your deposit back. You can't be listed. Okay. Well, that's 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 good, that's good, good stuff. Okay. Ready? Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Rick Warner and Jeremy Forcier. There you go. Okay, when we cut to the first commercial break, we ask this trivia question. We all know, or we all think we know, the conspiracy theory of Lee Harvey Oswald killing JFK. But who killed Oswald? Anybody? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. No, Dennis Rodman is not the answer. Go ahead. Uh, the Mafia. The Mafia. No. 
Oh, you got guys, it right. We, we only have six Jack, hours to go. Rick Ruby. Rick, Rick, Jack, Jack Ruby. Jack, Jack Ruby. Ruby. Okay, now, now Spencer. Or, um, okay, we are in the studio with Spencer Shearer, who is a very um, good real estate attorney. I've used him in the past, actually, um, for doing contracts and stuff like that. And um, Jeremy, you didn't say much last time. I think you were just kind of pondering all this stuff. I was mulling over. Mulling over. over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. But As if you could read. Well, that's true. <laughs> but you were going to uh, bring up a couple of points. Well, yeah, you know, I just think it's interesting. Um, when I was listening to Spence, you know, talk about what is Spence. Do you go by Spence? No. I do now. He do now. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> Spence, Spence, Spencer was talking about, you know, these new protections and whatnot. And then Rick was telling his story. And I was thinking, it just, it's just so, such a classic dilemma debacle with no solution, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like, we're going to come out with this new regulation that's not going to work or that's going to seem like it's. Um, more protection for a homeowner or whoever. Um, and sure. then the bank is going to figure out a way to go, okay, well, we told you that we can't do it now, so we meet our guidelines, and sorry, you're foreclosed anyway. And it, it, and I'm not on one side or the other, by the way. There are a lot of homeowners that we talk to all the time that haven't paid a mortgage in two years, sometimes three years, and are trying to figure out with me, well, how can we purchase a home right now? And I'm like, what, 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 yeah. what do you mean? And, <laughs> and, and, and then their story is always similar, too. It's that well, we've been taking advantage of for the last three years. And I'm like, we haven't made a mortgage payment in the last <laughs> three years. So I'm not really not on one side or the other. I just think it's such a, a challenging thing to address. And the word fair, quote unquote fair, right? If we're really going to be fair, the reality is is that most people were not taken advantage of. That's in, a very diplomatic in, statement. In, like in my opinion, that. most people right. were not. I've been paying um, my mortgage. Yeah, a lot of us bit off a little bit more than we could chew. Um, and there are consequences to that. Yeah, but the bank's at fault for giving me the loan. That's they, the one that drives me crazy. Yeah. They it's, shouldn't they have, should have given have, me the loan. Yeah. Right? They forced me. And, and, you know, to Jeremy's point, this is not, there's plenty of blame to go around this whole crazy thing. You could certainly you know, point at the government in some of the ways they loosened up some of their regulations. You could point at underwriting guidelines and the lack of auditing. You could point at the bank's you know, desire to, of course, to originate tons of loans and make a lot of money, but you have to, you cannot ignore the consumer sure. who was told that they could afford a $2,600 mortgage when they were making $5,000 a month before taxes. Oh, you know, something just for a little historical perspective, this is the greatest Ponzi scheme in the history of mankind. You're right. <laughs> because people couldn't get, they were getting 0.1% yield, so what they packaged the American dream in terms of mortgage-backed security, sold them uh, to Bank in Finland, Germany, wherever, and they kept needing warm bodies to be able to make new loans. So everybody was in on it with a wink and a nod. Everybody suffered, but I don't. I don't think any one person's to blame in the exactly. it Yep, was, I agree. You mean it was the real estate attorney's fault? Yeah. No. <laughs> President Clinton signed the deregulation bill in 2010. Yeah. But when you get when you tell your kids 10 years from now that uh, that you could just sign uh, a document saying I made this much income without proving it, they're gonna. Yeah. Right. No, that was the most insane thing, and I and and I even myself. I mean, I participated in that, you know. But, but you well, paid your mortgage. Though. But I paid my mortgage. Yeah. 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 So. But but it was like really money. I could just tell you how much I make, and they go, yeah, like, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, why wouldn't I participate? Well, unless you knew that you were biting off more than you could chew. I mean, there are people who are responsible, like you, Rick, who maybe he told him what he wanted to tell them, yeah. but he knew how much he could really afford Correct. to pay. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I mean, we were all gambling, and sometimes you lose and you gamble, sometimes you don't. And that's my opinion on it. Right. Can I say one thing on this homeowner's bill, because this sure. is critical beyond this sociological stuff, but is uh, what they've done in this bill that's different now is they've given safe harbors to lenders saying, you know, if you violated this bill and got a problem with your borrower, you can clean it up either before you foreclose and that you won't have liability for fees and costs, or if you clean it, clean it up just before you're going to actually hold the sale, you won't have liability. How do they how do they clean it up? What, what, what Your borrower you comes to you and says you did A, B, and C, D wrong, and you know you you're, you take the hard approaches and say I'm I'm going to just blast through this, and maybe you do. It turns out that you did A, B, and C wrong. They find out later. The point I'm trying to make is that if somebody forecloses now, the borrower's got about a three-year window period. A lot of these law firms are starting to do this, where they're searching through the files to find defects and then going back after wow. the bank. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is uh, the borrower goes to the lender and says, "You did A, B, and C, and before the foreclosure, what kind of remedy does the bank? Do you see the bank doing with that borrower?" So usually, what happens is the 
before the foreclosure sale, the bankruptcy is an option to stop a sale, which oftentimes can be arranged your loan, but you can stop the sale. If you can't do that, the borrower will call up and say, uh, you didn't contact me, or you didn't give me a single okay. point of contact, or you didn't give me a you know, proper denial letter. Denial but are letter. they modifying the loan, or are they just stopping the foreclosure? They're, they're trying, they're basically saying, you know, either our contacts regarding modification or your procedures in proceeding after the contacts broke down were wrong. You didn't satisfy them, so we're going to get a restraining order and stop you. Their law says under the Homeowner's Bill of Rights that if they really have legitimate grief, the bank can cure the defect, and if the borrower does not get a restraining order, the bank does not have to pay their fees. If the borrower is right, the bank's got to pay the attorney's fees for the borrower. It could be a lot. Say you get, let me finish this here. Let's say you get to the point where the, there's no restraining order, but the bank's going to hold a foreclosure sale, and the borrower sends you uh, information saying you still did X, Y, and Z yeah. wrong, and you go ahead and foreclose anyways. The borrower has a three-year period after that in which to use the statute to assert damages. Well, what about all the robo-signing and stuff? Because I remember a few years ago, the big thing was they weren't producing the actual documents because right. they didn't know where they were. There wasn't any because there were so many actual uh, whatever uh, investors. No, there was no document. Well, yeah, I was going to say. It was divided it, up into. That's a good point. So if nobody had the original documents, how were they supposed to foreclose? Yeah, so robo signing became an issue. Yeah. If you're a robo signer now and they can prove it and, and there was no uh, uh, no good faith effort to justify what was either a mistake or a willful or intentional act, then they can get, yeah. they can get up to $50,000 for okay. statutory damages. Tell you what, um, let's, let's change subject for just a minute here and go into the uh, tenant's rights. Because there's a lot of people out there listening who maybe don't own their home, but they want to know about landlord-tenant issues. Right. So I'll bring up a couple of those issues before we go to break. And when we come back, we're going to uh, do email time because we got some great email from these guys. All right, so two things real quick. One, uh, they changed. They had a federal uh, statute that's now been adopted in California that allows uh, tenants of people who are foreclosed to stay on after the foreclosure. It used to be it had a certain period of time. Uh, the federal statute gave you 90 days to leave right. afterwards. Now California is saying if you could show, along with the federal statute, that you have a legitimate lease, you can stay for the duration of the lease. And if I'm not mistaken, if I signed my lease prior to the landlord getting the loan, like we refinanced or something like that, my lease, um, I have precedent, right? So if I sign, let's say January 1st, 2013, I sign a lease, April 13th of 2013, the landlord goes and gets a loan on the property. The lender has to take it subject to my lease, correct? Not really. I mean, in a commercial yeah. context, they, they got different issues. If something was recorded and you had uh, you know, documents showing the actual notice or constructive notice, but in a residential context, the way the law is set now, if the lease is in effect the day before you foreclose, you can make an argument it's bona fide. Mm -hmm. Although people end up trying to backdate and double yeah. the lease. But so, it, but again, going back to let's say forget the new law right now. Right. Let's say this is eight months ago. Um, years ago the I, I thought that when a bank does a loan that if there's already an existing lease they take it subject to that so if they foreclose they have to stay on terms with whatever the lease is they can't just automatically kick the tenant out I'd, I'd say on a recorded uh, commercial lease absolutely and then lease, on an unrecorded yeah. residential lease most of them which are never more than a year, a year yeah. uh, you, you're very rarely if ever going to stick the bank with the lease if uh, okay. Absent the new okay, problem. tell you what, we're going to cut to another commercial break. When we come back, we're going to get into email time. Again, we're going to talk interest rates. The, the boys here are very intelligent when it comes to purchasing property, selling property, and mortgage interest rates. Again, the theme is assassinations. And uh, by the way, Spencer, stick around because uh, I'm sure you're going to have a, a good time chiming in here. But we want before we cut to this break, though, I want to have you tell people how they can get a hold of you if they have any real estate tax or excuse me, real estate questions. Two ways you can get a hold of us. Uh, we're with the Shear Law Group. We represent banks, lenders, investors, and occasionally a borrower, but very rarely. Uh, we're at 415-491-8900 uh, or www.shearlawgroup.com or the house band Factor 11 at www.factor11.org. <laughs> That's right, because he's, he's, he's got the big band. The big band, uh, Factor 11. They're actually very, very good. I've listened to him a number of times, actually. Um, and you know what's funny? Wait, Spencer's on. One more. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, the soon to be famous song we've created called Good Looking People Drink Wine and Bad Looking People Drink Beer. Yeah. You'll hear it soon. Okay. <laughs> and uh, in fact, here's a quick 
Oh. Seemed a bit off his game. That's okay. You know what? He, he, he can hear. Uh, I'll send it to you. He's, yeah. an, he's an attorney, so I guess. Well, you know, about two years ago, when I when I had Spencer on, um, about six months later, someone emailed me and said, you know what? I was listening to the show six months ago, and you had this real estate attorney talking about such and such, but I forgot to ask, you know, who it was or how to get a hold of him. So that, that's kind of a record. You know, six months later, someone's still asking for you. Okay, second commercial break, second trivia question. Which U.S. president was assassinated in 1881? The first three callers with the correct answer were a free three-day, two-night stay at the White House Reserve. Stop doing rabbit ears against Jeremy there. Uh, their website is lighthouse4fun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. You guys know your presidents? Which U.S. president was assassinated in 1881? Again, call 888 888- 912-1190. Make sure to include your name, your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't touch that dial because the best of investing will be right back. We went over, yeah. Pretty good on that one. Yeah, that was good. That was good. No, no, we went over on time. That's okay. It's um, it's not a problem. Because I, I sorry about that. The only hard no, no, break I have is the problem is he's got so end. much great stuff, and we're it's almost like we should have him on more often. It's not, Good stuff to talk about. Let's get the music stuff going. Let's do a music yeah, show. Yeah, let's do a music show. That'd Absolutely. be awesome. I would love that. We got to listen to. When are you back at Trek Wyoming? Next uh, Saturday. Saturday. It's good. It's good to have original stuff, and then they also play, you know, some of the old stuff that we know. You guys have to pay royal, not royalties, you have to pay a license, don't you? Not, not for live performances where we, we record really? stuff. Yeah, we do it on our CDs and we take some out. I pay a licensing fee. I didn't know that. I, I thought you're, you're supposed to call up ASCAP. I mean, you, every time you play out, you, you, you couldn't do that. Crazy. You know, I, it was crazy. At, at the restaurant, the Lighthouse Resort restaurant, these guys would call us on the blue, BMI or all those guys. Oh, you owe us, oh, you owe us money. For what? You know? Because you're playing the records that this was on? No, it's because we just had music going on. And then we'd, finally I get to say, sorry, we, we don't run the restaurant anymore. All we are is just the landlord. Stand it. And it's like, and, and I said, you know, who are you guys? Go, oh, we're trying to protect all the rich artists you know, that need their money, right? They need their drug money. So, yeah, uh, there and apparently there's three organizations. Ask so you have to pay them. all three of them because What's the Beatles may be done by one, but <laughs> Rolling Stones may be by somebody else. Right. So that's kind of, kind of a thought that is. It has something to do with casual. <laughs> we should switch seats with this guy. It's got, it's got all the puns going down. He's a very punny guy, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Rick Warner and Jeremy Forcier. Where we, <laughs> and Mark Hunt is off, off. I can't do that. Today. I did a little slow. Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. Remember yeah. Uh, The Secret of My Success, Michael J. Fox. Thank you very much. Okay. Peace. Oh. That's I right. thought it was uh, Ferris movie. Bueller's Day Off. It did both. They, it did it in both movies. Okay. Uh, that's Bueller. a trivia question. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody was going to say it. It had to be. It had to be. Yeah. Second trivia question. Which U.S. president was assassinated in 1881? Come on, guys. You got Come six on. years of high school. Go. <laughs> yes, that's true. I do have and six collectively. years. I was the only guy shaving in junior high, by the way. Were you really? Wow. Lincoln. Lincoln in 1881? I think not. Next. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? It's Garfield. Kennedy. It's Garfield. Garfield. That's what I said. You guys were Garfield the cat. over me. The cat. Garfield the cat. James it. Garfield. That is correct. Okay. We got some good emails here. That one is kind of, um, you guys can both answer in different uh, ways here. Uh, it's kind of a two parter. Rick, with interest rates rising, how much less house can I afford? Looks like a dead end over here. I know. I was, I, and I know I'm not Rick, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go You're much more attractive than Rick. <laughs> <laughs> My tie is nice. So, um, I mean, yeah, how do you answer that question? The reality is you're talking from a purchase price standpoint. Correct. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. But, uh, this guy writes in, and he wants, basically, I'm kind of summarizing it. He wants to buy a house, but interest rates are rising, so he's realizing, gosh, I may not be able to afford the house that I want because my loan is going to be larger. And so right. Tons, tons of variables there. Okay. Um, you know, down payment. It's really what it comes down to. Um, a lot of people, when they qualify for buying a house, they're qualifying for max financing. Okay, so maybe they have 10% down payment, or maybe they have a 3.5% down payment, let's say. Okay, those are the consumers that are affected the most. 
uh, when something changes because they don't have additional funds to put down uh, to make up the difference in monthly payments in the form of a down payment against the house. Um, so, I mean, I can answer it a ton of different ways. Right now, we just saw someone um, that could buy $40,000 less in purchase price because of the increase in interest rates over the last few months. Which right. went from what to what? Um, so they were looking at um, 370000 and then they got it pushed down to 330000 No, no. No, what I mean is uh, the interest rate went from what to what? That's, but I, I thought that's what your question was. Oh, okay. It's yeah, up about so, a point, right? Man, I don't know. Listen, any, any, <laughs> any mortgage person that tries to tell you anything about interest rates on late, honestly, and this is what's going to happen. Just run away. No, no, I don't mean that. No, but I mean, I know they're, they're up. No, no, they, no, yeah, they're, they, they're, they went from three percent to four percent. Yeah, well, they, they went four, over two yeah. months. They went from um, three and a quarter percent okay. uh, to almost five percent. Wow! And then now they're like at four and a half percent, four point six five percent. But then they went back up again today. Um, we lost eighty. So that's what I'm saying. It's like okay. right, but there's so much volatility right now in the marketplace. It's crazy, but they're up over a point. Okay. And that yeah. that does like, and, and I just ran some numbers on six hundred thousand dollars purchase okay. price. Goes up a hundred basis points, one percent. So if it goes from three and a half to four and a half, your difference in your payment is about two hundred and sixty bucks a month. Just up a month, just okay. straight on the mortgage. May or may Another not way make a difference. to kind of make it may or may not make yeah. a difference, but it, it is having an impact because, and this is what I talked about on last week's show as well. It's not just that interest rates have gone up; it's that the prices have gone Correct. up considerably. It's yeah. a double whammy. That's so it's point. a double whammy, and um, and and so I think that's going to. Definitely going to be pushing the brakes. Talk PMI. The PMI is another whammy to come down that too. Right? Well, yeah, but that theoretically, that's something that they already knew about. PMI is going to happen. You either were PMI or you weren't. But go ahead, talk about PMI. My wife's PMI every month. <laughs> no, oh, well, that's the different hey thing. Now, I'm sorry. Hey I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, no, if, if you buy a, a property all cash, then what are your mortgage payments? Well, you just want, you know, someone called me yesterday. They said they're looking for the lowest interest. Rate possible, and I said, Why well, can give you zero percent? Yeah, it's not 100 percent down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the guy chuckled for like a second, you know, but um, it's true, super easy. No, but you don't have that one. you don't have PMI if you put down uh, more than 20 percent, is it or 20 percent? Well, there's a lot of different PMI products out there, so um, you can put down 10 percent uh, and have no mortgage insurance up to a loan amount of 850,000 right now with really? a portfolio product that okay. guaranteed <laughs> mortgage offers. Um, so it is a true portfolio product. It's not a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac type loan, but we are seeing, starting to see some more products out there come out to deal with these increasing uh, prices with less than. 20%. Actually, that that actually that makes a difference because how how much PMI generally now is? Uh, PMI runs, and once again, there's about a thousand different yeah, qualifications for credit score. Um, well, it's going to be anywhere from um, 0.42 percent. That's a lot. To oh, that's the lowest. So it's going to be anywhere from 0.42% up to 1.55% of the monthly payment. Yeah, it's basically if you if you get a rate of 4% and you're at the highest tier, you're really paying five and a half percent. That is a lot. I mean, is that really? Yes, so, no, so, no. So, is, yeah. Yes, it is. Welcome a lot. to our world. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> that's what people say all the time. Yeah, really. Gosh, that's a lot. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, so uh, let me let me kind of back into this a minute then, because you're a portfolio lender and you may not require mortgage insurance for someone who puts down 10%. Correct. That is a huge advantage compared to going to, let's say, a regular bank yes. who would require it. Uh, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's it, a is, And that's a true thing. non-PMI. In other words, they're not buying it down. They're not buying it away. It is, because that's, that's another yeah. alternative that sometimes people sneak around with, right? It is a true yeah. no mortgage insurance loan. And you do that because it's a port. Yeah, we're, we're servicing it ourselves. We have an uh, interest in a credit union that we purchased, and it's just, they've been doing it forever out in New York. and we're Vertical integration. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So yeah. slightly higher rates, probably. Well, it's on a, a five or seven year arm, so it's only fixed for five or seven years. Okay. So that's the caveat. For Which it. a lot of people move in houses exactly. in, within five years, so that's not that huge a deal. No, but now we're starting to talk about the bank maybe do it again. So in seven years, someone's going to go, and you told me in seven years. But um, yeah. in any event, the rate the rates really are not, they're low. They're four and a half percent, no mortgage insurance right now in seven years. Okay, people yeah. are listening uh, that with pen and paper going, who is this guy who's talking and telling Edward, us? Edward, nobody has pen and paper anymore, uh, other than you. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> if you okay. Want to, 
Whip out your smartphone. <laughs> so everyone's getting ready to get see your contact page. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at it. Oh, oh, fancy schmancy. That's because you're 10 years younger than I. I still got a chisel and a uh, hammer and a big stone. All right, so I anyone out there waiting to scribe my contact information <laughs> and send Raven to their partner? <laughs> I prefer smoke signals. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, Jeremy Forcier, guaranteed rate. I'd be more than happy to discuss any. I mean, there is a lot to talk about right now when it comes to mortgages. Um, we couldn't cover it here and if we had 15 hours to talk. So if anyone has any individual questions, you can reach me at area code 415-717-7155. Wait, does that mean they need to schedule a 15-hour appointment? <laughs> yeah. I don't even like to spend that much time. You can also go to, you can also go to the best of investing and you can see Jeremy's pretty face on that page. He is pretty. He is pretty. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. Yeah. Who does he look like? Just stop. All right. So, <laughs> must be a wine drinker. He must be a wine drinker. Yeah, that's right. He's a good-looking one. Yeah, wine, and I know. am. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, All right. Very nice. Um, so, Rick, uh, back to you because you're kind of a guru when it comes to purchasing houses. Where, where, where's your specialty? Is it Sonoma, Marin? It's, it's Marin County and Southern Sonoma County. So, Petaluma, Luna Park, Sonoma, a um, little bit of Napa, not too far north of that, and then all of uh, all of. And you've, you've been uh, chiming in with these uh, excellent uh, points about like how much a house you can buy, depending upon your interest rate. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, best way to call me, or best way to get a hold of me, is just to call me, 415-302-6348. You can text me as well. Edward, I'll tell you what that means after the show. <laughs> yeah. um, or you can uh, email me, rick.warner at spcglobal.net. And we do have one more question for Rick. Why is Jeremy so good looking? He's a wine drinker. Oh, that's what you know. It was easy. All right, we're going to cut to our second or third commercial break here. And again, the theme is assassinations. Who assassinate? Who, excuse me, who was assassinated by James Earl Ray? Lincoln. <laughs> Stop with the Lincoln already. The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouse the number four fund.com. Call 888. 912-1190. Jeremy, stop looking at the internet and figure out what the answer is. That's 888-912-1190. I tell you, we have so much fun here. To answer this question, who was assassinated by James Earl Ray? And you can't call him because he was assassinated by him. Okay, make sure to include your name, your email address. James Earl Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, James Earl Jones was assassinated by James Earl Ray. No. Uh, make sure to include your name, interest. your email address. Speak slowly. Spell out your email one letter at a time. Don't pass that down because we're going to have some closing thoughts here on the Festival. I love having you guys on. It's funny. Are they funny? You guys are funny. Absolutely. You're funny. People like me. My clown. I make you laugh. Name that movie. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. No. Oh, wait. Boys no, I've got, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's the other. It's the Mafia one. Uh, the Mafia one. Yeah. It's uh, Ray, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. Getting closer. Is it not Ray Liotta? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Goodfellas. 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 You know what's funny? I didn't like that movie. There's other... That's other one of the, of the best of all time. Yeah. Just, I, I don't know. What I like that? almost every mob movie. Yeah, so do I. But uh, it, what was it? Goodfellas? Is that the one with Pesci? Fellas. Yeah. Fellas. Yeah. Fellas. Hey. What did I say? Fellows. Oh, excuse me. The Fellas. two youths. The two... Oh, no, uh... My Cousin Vinny. Thank you. Yeah. Two youths. But also the same yeah. actor doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 I love Fred. Right? You may have made the only two movie references that I could actually remember. I know, it's like, yeah. someone's Actually, asking me about books that I've read. Yeah, I've read. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, we're good. The dude. I've read name two that, books. Name that, not Rick. The Bible and Harold the Purple Crayon. Those are about the only two books I've read from cover to cover. You read the Bible from cover to cover? Isn't that like 62 books or something like that? 66. 66. 66. But actually, yeah. you know what I did was I, I one day I decided on January 1st, I had this little uh, pamphlet thing. You've seen those. You read, read that scripture a day type thing, whatever. Yeah. And I, I literally did it. And if I missed a day, I, I caught up the next you know, literally, they take one year to do it. I could have done, obviously, less. That's, that's incredible, though. I, you good. know what? And yeah, I don't it's have quite to, good discipline. That's to find any good stuff. I know. What was? Is there? A what's, good, yeah, what's the? I, I what's the? Hey, no, wait, what's, ready? Just, hey, what was the <laughs> what's the big takeaway? <laughs> yeah, the takeaway. Exactly. Exactly. Jesus what, Christ what, is the takeaway. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's, that's right. What that's was your big aha moment? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that that summed it all up. See, now wait a minute. Thought, no, we, we didn't even go here because I know this is on YouTube, so we're, we're going to 
I can just see me angering people, so I'm going to stop. Don't anger. Don't, don't nope. anger anyone. Yeah. Rule number one. Don't anger people. Don't, don't anger the listeners. That's right. No, rule number one is actually oh, that's not true. Doing cardio. That's interesting. Rule number one. Yeah, that's from a wait, job wait, interview. What's that? Rule one, always have good cardio. Cardio? <laughs> <laughs> Where Edward's whole life is guided by the Bible, and that's quite virtuous. It's Jeremy's Although little zombie movie. Maybe slightly misguided. Jeremy, on the other hand, is taught by the apocalypse. Zombie plant. Oh, zombie. Uh, you know, I, Edward's I trying to do heavy math over there and how many yes, minutes we have left. I, I, Seven. I just keep watching the body part. No, actually, we have a little bit of time here. Uh, What's the last segment? Is what are we going to talk about? Uh, I'm, I'm oh, 13. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not bad, right? What's 8 plus 11? Plus 1? 20. Plus 10? 30. There we go. That gives us 13, which puts us with more than 3 less. It's a little bit of extra stuff there. Okay. <coughs> what, are we gonna, what, do you, what do you guys want to talk about? Well, how about the debate on, because I still think you brought up something at the beginning, which was the uh, the overinflation and the prices may be pulling back, oh, entrenchment and all that. Yeah. Let's have that conversation. I'll give you the stats on that. Oh, uh, I'll just turn I over to you stats. I'm just going to make stuff yeah, up. Make, make stuff up. Yeah. I'm going to do like a Harvard review and just create my own stats. Yeah, that's that what they do. Who is it? What's that guy? It's one of the guys that we listen to. He just says 80% for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that guy? He talk, he talk, he, you took me to his uh, seminar. It was the guy who did the, the sales bible and all that. The Jeffrey Gittimer. He's yeah, all, just tell him 80%. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone says 80%. It's either 80 or it's 20. 80% <laughs> of the people. Oh, 20. Okay. There we go. Oh, you know, one thing we can talk about that would be good is uh, short sale de or deficiency. Short sale and oh, yeah. deficiency. Everybody wants to know about that. Yes. Am I liable on my loan? I don't pay the tax. Okay. Let's, let's ask that question, and then you get into your the question. You Can you answer it quickly? Because I think the other thing's more interesting to people, honestly. Start with you, and then proceed. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. We'll start with you. Okay, very good. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Jeremy Forcier and Rick Warner. And when we ask this, uh, excuse me, when we cut to the third commercial break, we ask this trivia question. Who was assassinated by James Earl Ray? Question, answer, crickets. Come on. Martin Luther King Jr. Luther King Jr. That is correct. Not Lincoln. He was a good Again, dude. Too. He was a good dude. Uh, Rick, you want to ask Spencer a question because he's still in the studio hey, wait, and wait, he's what still about, a real what estate about the party. other two dudes? They were good dudes, too. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what he was doing. He was a cat. John Boyd. He was a cat. John Boyd's great. John Boyd. John Boyd. John Boyd. John Boyd. Boyd. John Boyd. Anyway. Who's he? No. Could we no one. He's in, he's, he's, <laughs> in a, he's in a mob show right now. I can't stop thinking. Oh, okay. Ray Donovan. Check it out. It's awesome. Okay. Um, Rick, you wanted to ask Spencer yeah, since he's, he's still an attorney. Right he is still, still an attorney and he's still here. Yeah, and uh, he said something at the beginning of the show regarding uh, pricing and inflation. And are we kind of recreating maybe, and I'm putting words in your mouth a little bit, what we've already been through in terms of, uh, you know, having prices have gone up, what, 20, 20 to 25% depending on where you are in the last 19 months. Yes. Um, and you have some statistics or some numbers or something that says, hey, maybe there's going to be a pullback of it. Did I understand that correctly? In a way, I mean, okay. I, from the uh, 2007 to say 2009 period when things were just the bottom was just falling out, uh, and everybody thought real estate was, it was a pariah, you couldn't get rid of it fast enough, it was being foreclosed out. Now there's a big comeback, I and mean, that's the sector leading the so called recovery. Yeah. But whether it's, it's, it's real or whether it, there's other forces that are keeping uh, it's supply and demand. So if there's a ton more supply that comes in the market, prices are going back down. So this guy, Gary Schilling, says uh, he had a bunch of things to do with it. Saying, but one of them are first the legislation we're talking about slows things down. Second, there's a lot of pipeline inventory, meaning that uh, items, whether it's due to legislation or because banks aren't uh, taking their foreclosures and actually washing them out, but letting people refinance through a new loan mod over and over again, that's keeping inventory off the market. And then you've got what some people think is a, an artificial uh, demand creation from foreign investors who are coming in and buying because uh, they think that. Uh, Yeah, you you're shaking your head. No. Uh, well, I'm just not seeing anything. it on the ground is the only thing. So, I mean, I, I understand, you know, some of those numbers and quantifying them and what, what they actually mean. And I mean, I'm sure that there are, you know, there's some pent up uh, inventory possibly with people that are in default that uh, maybe even with modifications and so forth ultimately at some point end up on the market. Right. 
what we were running at, uh, you know, 50% distressed sale, and now we're down to like 15. So could that come, that number come back? Yes. Uh, but to what extent? I think the, the more likely scenario is that because prices have gone up so much, Harry is seeing that Joe sold, you know, his neighbor sold the house down the street, his same exact house for 150 grand more than he thought his own house was. And he says, hey, you know what? I think I'll put my house in the market. Yeah, but I think you, that you don't just, just put your house on the market just because the price goes up. No, you, you have to have a picture. No, you don't. But, to... but there have been people that have been, keep in mind that between the times that he was talking about from, say, basically uh, September of 2008 to February of 2012, you didn't really choose to put your house in the market. It was an, it was an event-driven thing. Oh, you lost your job. You had to do a short sale. Somebody died. You had to relocation. Re relocation. Yeah, it was an event based. It wasn't to uh, reap equity and move up or right size. Okay. Exactly. Right. Sure. And so now you have people. Th there are people that wanted to do those things during that time, but it didn't make sense. Now they can. Re now we're having move up buyers again. I mean, like tons of move up buyers, uh, where they were just sitting on the sidelines before. So there are people, even though it won't be everybody on the street, there are people that have been sitting are you, there. Are you finding like families? Of course, yeah. Is it mostly, I mean, like, you know, four kids or in two bedrooms? And well, it's, it's everything. It's not just okay. that. It's, um, but so I think that's the more likely scenario where the inventory will come from. Um, I and agree, by the way, because we've been hearing all this threat of shadow inventory for like two years. No, like four years. I mean, it's yeah, ridiculous. Guess what? It's not a shadow anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, in my opinion, I mean, we could have stuff come back into the market, you know, stuff that hasn't gone through due diligence or process yet. And, some of this legislation may bring more to the market. Well, Spencer might know that. I mean, are, are the banks still holding a lot of No, so this inventory? is a good conversation because, you know, I think in a lot of respects, I think most people have got the impression now things are heading back to the way they should be and, and the way they were. But you've got uh, somewhat, you a lot less, there's some stat that came out saying that home ownership was 67% of Americans and now it's down to 65. And a lot of people don't see home ownership. They see living in the, the basement of their parents' house or whatever as an alternative. But beyond that, I'm just saying, do see from these homeowners bill of rights legislation and much more significant legislation coming in in January of next year uh, for the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau of items that are keeping a lot of inventory off the market. And I think you're going to see uh, a resurgence of that in the next 24 months. We'll Interesting. Oh, bring it on. Well, wait, resurgence of what? More <laughs> well, ultimately closure. not working? Yeah, washouts from loan mods that okay. didn't work. Uh, uh, banks who are holding on REO who decide to put it on the market because now instead of like in say Antioch or Stockton where you're going to get $20,000 you know maybe they, they think they get 54 now but it turns out that it's still the same 20. A lot of this inventory I, I think the shadow inventory people I, I think are saying it's it's an overused term but there is clearly a slowdown from legislation no doubt about that. I think loan mods that people still can't afford they're going to wash out. And Absolutely. Yeah. If you do get a little bit of a downtick in the economy if the Fed uh, Sugar rush does wear off a little bit. I think you're going to see uh, you know, real estate values go down from the lack of demand, whether it's from investors or just homeowners moving out. Well, we know for sure that if interest rates can continue to go up, that will slow things down. And then if inventory comes up, that will definitely slow things down. I mean, it's just like you said, supply and demand is very simple. The question is, you know, are those things going to happen? Hopefully, things are going to happen and, and so forth. I guess the, the thing that I'm hanging my hat on a little bit is that the lending process now, uh, the people that have been buying houses, for the last, whatever, four years, have to go through true underwriting. Um, and they, there is no, just tell me how much you make, you know? And they have to have real down payments and real jobs and everything to, to No, I, I agree, that, no doubt on that, but, but I, I still think that's why I'm saying the backdrop's still there. I just, it's like deleveraging in general. Everybody thinks the Fed's gonna take away their bond buying, you know, program, everything's gonna go back. There's still a washout of just tremendous assets. Every time people think something's gonna calm down in Europe, Spain goes down. Yeah. Ireland goes down. And right. I'm saying there's this a macro, there's a mini version of that going on here where you've got a lot of people who are in loans they still can't afford. you got a lot of homeowners, like you said, who want to put their properties back on the market hoping they can get what they paid for 10 years ago. And it, uh, well, I still that's not going to happen. Not going to. Okay. Let's switch over to the short sale part because, uh, Spencer, you have some good information about that because questions come up from people who are either thinking about short sales or have gone through them. I was going to say, do you want to talk about deficiencies or short sure. sales? Oh, well, the deficiencies. Whatever you were talking about. Yeah. All right, here we go. We were talking about music before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love an attorney who's got a sense of humor. Go ahead. No, I think a lot of borrowers, we get calls all the time. And, you know, 
again, we represent the banks, but the borrowers are always calling up saying the bank's coming after me for deficiencies on my loan. And uh, they've changed that. The legislation, in a lot of respects, has changed it. If there's a purchase money loan, uh, for, in most instances, a one to four residential property, you're not going to be able to get a deficiency. Now, what, per purchase money as compared to a refinance? No, that, that's, that's, a, that's a different issue. Purchase money meaning that I give you the money to purchase the house versus I have a house and have an equity line and I take out the equity. That's the difference. But what they've changed the legislation now is they've provided that if once a purchase money loan, all, always a purchase money loan. So if you go do a refi now, oh. and it's kind of like FIFO for an accounting practice, if you can show what portion of that money came from purchase money, that that amount will Well, if I, if I bought a house for a you know, million dollars and I had an $800,000 loan, and then the house goes way up in value, and then I refinance and I do, uh, you know, I take out a million, uh, the first 800000 is still considered purchase money? Yeah, where before, before the new legislation, there's a question as to whether the refinancing lender uh, could collect a uh, deficiency against you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that, that, that's changed things a lot. Short sale, again, no deficiency in almost all instances, absent fraud or waste. What, waste? Yeah. Fraud. Yeah. What, wait, what did we just say? <laughs> what, what's waste? What is waste? Waste is for, uh, for those people uh, under 40, waste is uh, sitting around and wasting your life for... Uh, Oh, I thought, but waste <laughs> it sounded like a legal term. Yeah, it is. But the real estate term, waste, is if you either uh, intentionally destroy property, ah, okay. take the, pi the plumbing, piping, and in some instances, if you don't pay your taxes and collect income, that can be waste as well. So thinking about all the copper plumbing, that's not a good idea. Yeah. If I seen get, it. You know, seen it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all the wiring? Mm-hmm. I've seen that. Or sabotage. I, I like the guy who, uh, who made it look like everything was cool. He just cut all the little wire, all the stuff that you wouldn't really, so it wasn't, he didn't take anything with him. He just sabotaged the house so that if somebody didn't do a great inspection, they would have not even noticed until they went to turn on the heater, for example, and it fucking messed up. So, like, take, take off the wall plate? Just clip, clip, clip the wires behind the thing so you have... <laughs> so why not the heater? Oh, the whole, all the wire harness has been cut. Well, didn't they call it something like a, a crayon party or something? I mean, it's just terrible where people like are getting foreclosed on, and they just invite people to come over with crayons There's and this, write on the wall. Again, walls. which is like we talked about at the beginning That's of the show. There's this weird sense of yeah. like uh, victimization, yeah. mm -hmm. too. You know, where it's like, oh, well, we'll show the bank, and it doesn't show the bank, and you know, whatever. Well, it does cost them, but it, it, you know, you don't want a criminal. I guess it gets is that considered a criminal? I don't think it is because house? it's still your house. It's still your house. Right? How about eminent domain on mortgages? See that? No. No. That's interesting. Now, that's like the revenge of the. Uh, so now Richmond is now saying that you know, like they could take eminent domain and grab your house if they want to go three way. Yeah. They're saying for these mortgagers, um, the lenders will not allow refis on these loans. They're going to seize them, pay them a portion of it, and then uh, rewrite the loan for the borrower in the name of that. Wow. 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 Boy, that opens up a slippery slope. I'm sure people that like, listen to this station are going to love that idea. You see him doing it, Miranda? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, we uh, broadcast all over the place. In uh, fact, I, I heard from somebody way out of way out of state because he heard it on iHeartRadio. I'm not talking about our location. What are you talking about? Oh, well, you know what I'm talking about. That's totally <laughs> awesome. I think that's great. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy's trying to recover me. <laughs> Throwing your life vest, buddy. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys, Spencer Shear, our guest, who a real estate attorney. Give out your phone number one more time so people get a hold of you. It's 415-491-8900. That's a nice easy number, 491-8900. I like that. Can we text to that number? Of course. All right. Edward, I'll explain to you what that means. <laughs> yeah, text, I, text to me means a textbook that I yeah. used to hit. No, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, Rick, how do people get a hold of you one more time? 415-302-6348. And why do they want to get a hold of you? Uh, because only if you want the most amazing and best experience of uh, purchasing or selling. There you go. Okay. If you want something less than that, please don't call. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy? Well, I'm always happy to be. let everyone else be number one. If you want a number two experience. <laughs> 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 uh, no, Jeremy Forsey, Guaranteed Rate Mortgage. Happy to chat with you about any of your mortgage needs, questions, concerns. You can reach me at 415-717-7155. All right. We're going to cut out here. Our thoughts. I've always said Jeremy was number one in the number. Hey, now. There you go. Okay, our thoughts for the day. I love that. It was recently discovered that research causes cancer in rats. You ever heard of that one? <laughs> okay, and if 75% of all accidents happen within five miles of home, why not just move 10 miles away? Okay, tune in next week to The Best of Investing. We're going to be giving away nine more free vacation experience and trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, 
I'm Edward Brown. I'm wishing you the best of investing. So long. And that's a wrap. Wishing you the best. Very good. Those are classic Edward Brown jokes.